What you're seeing now is our crew bunk room. This is a space that will be filled out by Virginia Seitz and Emma Defani, a pair of great artists from Oklahoma City. Here's how we built this structure. First, we figured out the basic shape for the bunks themselves. I did this working with uh, Virginia and Emma. We're cutting out the profile of these two vertical planes on our shop bot. Obviously, the plywood isn't big enough to span the whole space. So here, Corey is rounding over edges, smoothing things out a little bit, and then getting ready to use biscuits to align these two pieces that we cut so everything looks like one once it's all painted and finished. Here's the biscuit joiner. This is actually my dad's old biscuit joiner. We hardly ever use this thing, but in instances like this, it's kind of perfect. Not a super strong joint, but great for alignment. Here I am on the ground getting ready to glue everything together. This was kind of a complicated glue up. Tim and I uh, ended up using these pipe clamps and weights just to hold everything together. Tim's installing these ledgers into the space itself that will support the weight of the bunks. And as Corey adds here, like and subscribe. When we first got them fitted, we knew we would have to cut the profile of the gusset. Instead of designing that at the computer, we just squared it off and then scribed it. Corey and Tim did a nice job getting everything fit in. And here we are getting ready to actually install these panels together. The way we built the space and the panels themselves, everything's pretty lightweight, but with all the right angles, it holds together and makes for really strong surfaces. Corey and Tim got the, the bunks kind of rough fit and rough assembled on those ledgers and then sliding in the mating pieces so we have these uniform planes. Dividers will then go in here in a minute that break up the bunks from the shelf spaces. All the paint treatment we're doing in here, we're basically treating as primer. Ultimately, Virginia and Emma are gonna add a lot of color, but behind everything in the ship, we like to have this kind of battleship gray that gives, when you see things between cracks or as a basic surface, it gives a starting point. This primer is all stuff we've actually mixed up using old paint from other projects a good way to reuse things. Here Tim's making those wall dividers because we really do want the bunks and the shelves to be to be separate so it does feel like someone's personal space, just really cramped personal space. Moving on to the lockers themselves, this is a really important part of the ship because the one locker is the entrance point for this hidden passageway. This dark black lit room with a bunch of interactives where Wes Kramer's Alien Menace kind of has taken up residence. So it's really important that these lockers look, all three of them, the same, but still be big enough that one can enter and go through the uh, furthest locker. These are also some of the only doors that people will interact with. And as we learned in the last time we did an interactive art piece, uh, Sugar High, way back when, anything that someone can open and close is just going to get abused. So we wanted this to be really robust. Yeah. 
adding the lockers like this with these dividers attached to the bunks, this whole structure is incredibly rigid and strong now. And we're really happy with how it's turned out structurally, but now we have to make it look good, look like it belongs in space. So lots more of paint, but not just paint, we've mixed in at various stages some um, rock hard water putty with the paint, which when we let it dry and then sand it, the surface we get is much smoother and harder than you would get with just latex paint on plywood. We don't want it to feel like plywood, we want it to feel like it belongs in a spaceship. Here's one of the locker doors itself with these vents and a space for a nameplate and a handle hole. And then we cut these dados into the back side where we can glue in some ribs of uh, a different plywood that will give it more rigidity and strength in that direction. Plywood isn't super rigid as a plane, but when you add this 90 degree rib on each side, it actually becomes a really strong door. Mouse has been spending a lot of time at the workshop, and when I'm filming, he just gives me this look like, what do you want from me? I mean, what do you want? And then I put the phone down, and he runs up and gets pet. Getting the process figured out for these doors took just a little bit of effort because they will be touched by a lot of people. So we want everything to be smooth, not feel like plywood, but also be smooth and, and where you want to grab it. Kat and Corey and I all spent a lot of time sanding, painting, adding the water putty, smoothing, kind of eyeing it, moving around, and ultimately I'm really happy with how they look. And again, more layers will get built on top of this with more color or texture, but you gotta have a starting point. Fitting inside that locker to get the hinges installed, well, it was, it was tight. It worked. It wasn't comfortable. So we're coming right now out of the galley into the crew bunks, and this is gonna look a lot different than you've seen it before. We have our crew bunks actually built. We have three bunks, one, two, three, uh, a couple shelves, another space down here. These crew bunks, they're not small. I mean, they're not like roomy, but big enough. I mean, I'd sleep here if I was on the spaceship. So then we also have over here the lockers. The lockers for the crew, place to put things, one, two, and then three goes somewhere else. Into the hidden passage, which then exits out the other direction. Hey guys, say hi Tim.